Hello, hello, my beautiful, beautiful love bugs. Welcome to Good Morning with me, Misty B. Guys, I am an absolute dreamer. I literally, I dream, I write in my journal and I literally <laughs> write down my dreams a lot of times, but even the things that I want to come to fruition, I write them down. I am an absolute believer in vision boards, but I don't believe in doing them once a year. I believe in doing them whenever you have a dream in your heart. Today's guest, okay, she is a big dreamer and she made her dreams come true and she didn't do here do it here in the US, but guess what? It's an amazing story. And if you have little people surrounded by you right now or somewhere in the near future, make sure they watch this episode because it's gonna be something you want to use to inspire them. We're going to be right back with today's guest right after this break. See you in a second. at Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 Cadillac XT4 Luxury Collection for only $319 a month. The new 2021 Cadillac XT5 Luxury Collection for only $399 a month. Both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase either and enjoy 1.9% APR for 60 months plus bonus cash. Gold Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. My prenatal promise is to make sure my baby is safe and healthy. Because I know it is possible to acquire syphilis, HIV, or other STDs without knowing it, getting tested is my very first chance to protect my baby. Doctors are required to give expectant mothers three separate tests for syphilis. If you're pregnant, ask your doctor if you're being tested properly for syphilis and other STDs. Congenital syphilis can lead to a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an infant death. Don't risk your baby's health. To find out more, visit MyPrenatalPromise.com. Welcome back everyone. I have my very first international guest with me today. I'm so excited for this interview. Her name is Miss Janelle Jordan and she is a professional volleyball player. Welcome Miss Janelle. Hello Thank my you, dear, how are you? Hi, so how are you? Thank you I'm so well. much for having me on the show. Look at those arms. <laughs> yeah, they're huge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk to me. Because I, you know, I want to definitely get into your career. Uh, tell me, where all have you played volleyball professionally? So professionally, I started off in Finland um, in a, a town called Rovaniemi. Um, I played there for two years. Okay. And fun fact, it's so far up in the north that it's actually nicknamed Santa Claus Village because it's basically in the North Pole. Okay. So you actually can see Santa year round. Um, but I played there for two years and then I went to the Philippines for a summer. And then I'm going to start my second year in Spain on the islands called Tenerife. It's a Canary Island out there. Ooh, nice. Okay, so since you're on an island in Spain, are you guys playing outdoors? Like, is it beach volleyball? No, it's all indoor. Um, we go to the beach for fun on our off days just to get away. But training wise, it's all indoor, six on six. Um, we practice about five to six hours a day, depending on the week, depending on the game schedule and everything like that. I love it. So I'm just curious, what got you into volleyball anyway? Because I know you're tall. How tall are you? <laughs> yes, I'm six two. Okay, so pe did people automatically expect, oh, she's going to play basketball? Yes, everybody always says, oh, do you play basketball? And I'm like, no, it's volleyball, but <laughs> you're I know you get that. Like, I'm 5'9", um, and I get that, and I'm like, no, no. But tell me, how did you get started in volleyball? So, I actually, it's actually a really funny story. Um, I actually played a lot of sports before I got to volleyball, but the last two I was playing uh, was track and cheerleading. Okay. <laughs> I was running track and now I was a cheerleader. And 
I actually tried out for the cheerleading team and I didn't make it. And I was really, really shocked just because I've been cheering for a few years then. And um, so me being me, I went to the judges and I asked, like, I respectively, like, I understand that I didn't make the team, but I just would like to know what I did wrong. Mm -hmm. And they responded and they said, you actually were perfect. You were loud. Everything was on point. You're flexible. We just think your height could be used for something else like volleyball or basketball. Okay. So really, they kind of chose my sport in a sense. Um, and like I said, this was in middle school. So this was, um, I was 14 years old and cheerleader tryouts were before the first day of school and volleyball tryouts were on the first day of school. So since I didn't make the cheerleading team, I tried out for volleyball. Wait, let so, me ask you something really question, really quickly, Janelle. So were you heartbroken? Were you crushed when you didn't make the cheerleading oh, yeah. team? Okay. Oh yeah. But you yeah, didn't let I that really stop you. Cheer. So you still went yeah. to play. Okay. So what happened when you tried out for volleyball? Oh yeah. So I tried out for volleyball and I actually made the second team. So you have to remember also that I was six feet in middle school. Okay. Um, and so you see this really tall girl, athletic, and she's on the second team for volleyball. Never played before. Couldn't serve a ball over the net. All I had was strong legs and the will to work hard. Um, and so that kind of drove me just because like, I never like being second. I always want to be the best that I can. Mm -hmm. And so because it was a new challenge, I, I took, I embraced that challenge and I kept going with it. And I eventually really, really fell in love with it because I'm not going to lie. When I first made the team, I was not happy. And I was like, I'm just playing a sport just to play a sport. When in reality, my heart was more into track and cheerleading during the time. So what made you finally get that oomph? Like, what made you finally happy with volleyball? What was that moment for you? Um, I actually went to a really big club volleyball tournament. So club volleyball is somewhat like AAU basketball, mm -hmm. um, which most people can kind of relate to. Um, so you have these big tournaments that happen in convention centers and um, colleges come and they look at you and that's how, kind of how you get recruited. Well, we played against this one team and we got demolished. I mean, it was embarrassing. And again, a feeling that I never want to go through again. And I was like, I told my dad and I was like, I don't want to go through that again. Again, I would like to play for that team. And come to find out they were the best team in the Houston area. Um, so we went to their club and I tried out, made their top 15s team, but it was a lot of coaching me individually because the girls I was playing with actually have been playing since they were eight years old. Oh, so wow. their skill level was much higher than mine was. So, so let me ask you, any regrets of... with uh, cheerleading? No, <laughs> mm -mm. not at all. No, no, no. I think actually cheerleading gave me the fire. If you talk to a few coaches of mine, they actually nicknamed me a cheerleader just because I'm always yelling on the sidelines. I'm supporting my teammates. I always have that energy. I'm always dancing, doing something fun. Um, so I actually like that I did do cheerleading just because I gave, I think it gave me an extra personality on the court with volleyball. Um, I have a lot of fans who say, oh, we love watching you play. You're mm -hmm. so fun. You look like you really enjoy and love the game. And I really do. Um, so I actually contributed to cheerleading because when people ask, I'm like, no, I'm not ashamed. Like I was a cheerleader. I love cheerleading. I think it was a great sport that led me into a career that I really um, excel at. So a question for you. This is what I want to know. Well, actually, it's not even a question. It's more of inspiration. Yes. Right. So because yes. sometimes we're on this path and we're dead set. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm supposed to go in life. And then something amazing happens and it kind of veers us. That's something I think can inspire young people to, you know, hey, it's OK if I get, quote unquote, rejected. You're actually not being rejected. You're actually being veered into the direction that you're really going to excel at. And I feel like you are the perfect example of that. Like absolutely yeah. perfect. What are, like what are your <laughs> thoughts about that? I mean, I agree with it. Um, I have a. I also think it's a mindset. So for me, I feel like every downfall is a secret. It's like a blessing in disguise, is what mm -hmm. I like to say, because you just don't know, like, okay, why one door closed, but another one can open in just a much larger way. 
Um, so for me, when I talk to, I mean, when I even give advice to younger girls, I'm like, everything is actually not going to go perfect. It's not going to go your way. And especially for me starting out so late in volleyball, one thing that a coach said to me that has really stuck is that you have to get worse before you get better. Mm. And I think that just contributes to life as well, is that you have to go through some things in order to build you up and make you tougher as a person, a tougher in a mindset, tougher on the court, on the field, whatever sport you may be playing or not playing, or just in the business world. Um, if you don't get the client that you want or something doesn't work out in your favor as you thought it would, I think it actually gives you the extra drive, the extra push. Um, so like that's where my inspiration really comes from is just knowing that I can always do better and that like even though it may not plan out the way I wanted it to, mm -hmm. there's a reason it didn't and there's always another bright side and I might not see it that same day, that same week, it may be a month from now, maybe a year mm -hmm. from now, but I try to just continue on that path, trust that God's plan is for me and continue to better myself as an individual so that I can excel myself on the court. Janelle, did you ever attempt to play a professional volleyball here in the States? Um, no. So actually, um, fun fact, there actually was not a professional volleyball league here in the States until this past February of 2021. Um, that mm -hmm. was their first league, professional volleyball league. Um, and it's, it's different. It's great. Love it. But as I mentioned I was in Spain so they did ask me to play I had to respectfully decline but they played for about six weeks if I remember from mm -hmm. the month of February to the month of March um, and it's totally different but it's great I loved watching it I kept up with it um, and I do want a chance to play in it just to experience it and be part of history because volleyball here in the United States the biggest you do see is at the collegiate level. And if you want to play mm -hmm. after that, you have to go to a different country. Okay, um, so hold that thought, because we're about to go to break. But I want to—I have a specific okay, question no I want to ask you. <laughs> we're going to be right back with volleyball professional. Professional, sorry, I'm not talking clearly today. We're going to be right back with Miss Janelle Jordan right after this break. at Ron Carter Cadillac with the new 2021 XT6 Luxury Collection with standard third row seating for just $4.59 a month for 39 month lease with only $1 down or purchase and receive 1.9% APR for 60 months plus $2,500 bonus cash. Gulf Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Test drive the new 2021 Escalade today at Ron Carter shop Cadillac. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. I'm a part of the prenatal care club now, taking all my STD tests. Did you know your doctors required bylaw to test you three times for syphilis and HIV? Yes, my husband and I are making sure I get all three tests. Oh, good, testing is the key to preventing congenital syphilis. And good prenatal care is your first labor of love. Glad to hear your husband is so involved. Thank you, yes, taking all my STD tests for syphilis is important to both of us. My prenatal promise is to prevent a stillbirth or miscarriage. To find out more, visit myprenatalpromise.com. Welcome back, everyone. I am still here chatting with Miss Janelle Jordan. So, Janelle, let's talk about love and volleyball. So, tell me, I know love, I know volleyball is one of your loves. What are your other loves? Um, let's see. I love to travel. I love food. Um, I love girly things. I am super girly, so I love going to the beach, getting my nails done, shopping, all that. Um, but I think the big privilege or the big, the number one thing I love would have to be food for sure. Ooh, so let's talk about that. So food, love, okay, so let's go. We have love, we have volleyball, and we have a love for all, both of those, food and volleyball. So, and you're in Spain. So how has the food been? With, when, when you're out with your team, talk to me, like create the experience for me as if I'm there. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I mean, it's pretty great. Um, honestly, it's more great on our off days. Um, during the weekday, it's kind of boring. We go to the grocery store and cook. Um, so that's just normal. But uh, on our off days, I actually like to go to the Spanish restaurants versus mm -hmm. the tourist restaurants. Because just like any other country, you have, you know, the stuff where everybody goes versus just okay i'm here on vacation mm -hmm. let's go to a regular restaurant i can get a hamburger or something um so spanish food is very different and in a good way it has a lot of flavor um and it's all in like tapa style so it's really mm -hmm. a whole bunch of appetizers mm -hmm. um, nice. so it's like you can um they have dish that kind of tastes like potato salad to me that's super super good mm. um then they have a dish that's a uh, tortilla and it's actually eggs mixed with potatoes, onions, a choice of meat and seasoned. And it's kind of, you kind of cut it in try, like in little pizza slices, honestly. Okay. Um, but it's, it's very, it's good. It just has flavor to it. Um, they're really big on their sauces. So every place you'll go, like in America, you'll get bread and butter. Mm -hmm. In Spain, you get bread with two different type of like salsas almost oh. is what they look like and one's green one's orange one pink has kind of like a ginger taste to it it's really really interesting the um and so like i said they have a lot of different flavors that really i like to say explode in your mouth and everything you taste is going to expands your palate um yes it does it really does expand your palate um and then, of course, they have the normal, you know, French fries and steak and stuff like that, which is also really big there with a different with a type of sauce on type on top. Sorry, um, that they use. Uh, but yeah, you kind of they have a good atmosphere. It's usually outside. Um, oh, inside, lovely. it's usually like a darker set area. Mm -hmm. um, it's very it's you, one place is actually in a cave. Like it actually looks like you're I'm walking sorry. Did you say a cave? A cave. Yes. Okay. okay. You have bats flying <laughs> you while you're eating. In, like, yes. I'm okay. I'm trying to picture this. <laughs> yeah. So if you really like it, like if you pick any movie, kind of, if you've ever seen a movie with a cave in, I can't really think of one off the top of my head, but it's like a dark rock, and you walk in, with just there's some light bulbs on the side, and then all of a sudden it opens up into this big area with all these tables, and you, to the left of you, actually looks, you can see all the meat that you're going to order, almost like, it looks like a grocery store section, when you can order fresh meat, like cut how much you like, and like see, like fresh And, and this is in a like cave? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about, look, through. I can't, you in this cave, you're throwing me. Um, I need to bet. But let's talk about, tell me about your team. So you're going up on your second year in Spain, correct? Yes, ma'am. All righty, so you're playing volleyball. What has been your favorite uh, team that you've competed against thus far? Ooh, favorite team, I would have to say, is the opposing island, Las Palmas. Okay. Um, there's only two islands, where the two closest islands in next to each other who are in the league all of our other teams are inland but las palmas versus tenerife which is our team cb harris um it's kind of like any rivalry college game so okay. pick like for me it was stanford berkeley because i went to berkeley um so it's kind of one of those rivalry games where everybody's super excited it's a harder week of practice tv like shows it the whole time, like it's it's a big big deal, and you really do experience the fans and like the support from really both sides. Like, um, but it's that camaraderie it drives me, and it's like fun. Like I know the environment I'm gonna be playing in and against other people, and like oh, it's great. <laughs> I love that. It sounds exciting. What's like? What's been one of your highlights though during a game? Fin Finland, Philippines, or Spain? One of your favorite personal highlights personal highlights i don't really know if it's a personal highlight but my favorite is blocking somebody one-on-one -on -one when it's not expected um so basically like since i am in the middle um i i follow the ball so for people who don't know volleyball wherever the ball goes i go um and one of my favorite um plays is when I block just an individual one on one against me with no help and it goes straight down. That's like gets me going. <laughs> so I can exciting. see you like towering really. over and like scaring somebody. Yeah. I can see me like behind you like no <laughs> like please don't hit <laughs> really me ball. <laughs> 
So one of my favorite things about your story, seriously, on a personal level, is that you fell in love with something. You know, I love love. You fell in love with something. And even though it wasn't offered here professionally in the States, you went out and you found your dream. So I'm always talking about, or you lived your dream. I'm always talking about uh, dreaming out loud, Janelle. And I think for you, I'm going to name you, you dreamed outside the box. And the box being oh, the U.S. And you went outside of the U.S. You went to Finland, cold, freezing. I can't imagine that that had to be a wonderful experience outside. You went to Phil uh, Philippines, you went to Spain, and you literally have dreamt outside the box. I absolutely love that about you. Like that, that's amazing. Thank you. Oh, yeah. you're almost not blushing. Like, you know, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what a blessing, it's really cool. It is. Um, so uh, I have a question for you. This is just for me because I'm nosy. Can I see you, will I see you in the Olympics one day? <laughs> no, why not? <laughs> no desire. Um, it's just, yeah, I mean, I love the USA. I would love to represent my country, and I have represented my country in other tournaments. Um, but also going to get to the Olympics, not to say that it's, it is a different path, honestly, um, and truly, but I also have to, mm, <sighs> you kind of take, in my opinion, you have to start playing volleyball much younger um, for the Team USA people. And I actually did try out for Team USA as a sophomore in college. Okay. Um, and it was a great experience and all that. But if we're going to be completely real, I feel like they picked their team before I got to the tryout. And mm -hmm. I personally think it was unfair. And not going to lie, it kind of discouraged me. Okay. Um, not in the in the sense of like, you know, I, I could go to the Olympics. I know I have the skills for it, but I also would like a fair shot. And I feel as if there was not a fair shot along with a lot of other girls who I was with, um, who they kind of just feel like they had to try out because they had to have the tryout versus like actually looking at the skills of who could potentially make the team great. But like I said, that's biased and that's a whole nother. But that's your opinion. <laughs> I do. We have to wrap uh, up, but I do want to ask you. Yeah. If you could inspire some young girls who have this dream and maybe they can't find their dream inside of the box, what would you say to them? I would say that the there's never really a box. The box is unlimited. You can do whatever you want as long as you put your mind to it and you're willing to work. Um, nothing in life comes easy, but the reward is amazing. Um, so I'd say keep working hard, keep smiling, keep studying, um, and keep being the best you. Never forget who you are, and always know that there's somebody out there who has your back. Um, and don't be afraid to talk to anybody about that. Janelle, thank you so much for inspiring not only the young girls, but for inspiring me too, because I absolutely have fallen in love with your story. So I love love in volleyball. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. You know, dreaming is, is, is just amazing, right? So it's something that we have to always do. I, I love dreaming and I'm going to continue to talk about it as always. I will be right here right after this break to inspire you all. And I hope Miss Janelle Jordan inspired you too. at Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 Cadillac XT4 Luxury Collection for only $319 a month. The new 2021 Cadillac XT5 Luxury Collection for only $399 a month, both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase either and enjoy 1.9% APR for 60 months plus bonus cash. Gulf Freeway, just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. My prenatal promise is to make sure my baby is safe and healthy. Because I know it is possible to acquire syphilis, HIV, or other STDs without knowing it, getting tested is my very first chance to protect my baby. Doctors are required to give expectant mothers three separate tests for syphilis. If you're pregnant, ask your doctor if you're being tested properly for syphilis and other STDs. Congenital syphilis can lead to a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an infant death. Don't risk your baby's health. To find out more, visit MyPrenatalPromise.com.
Welcome back. Did you guys love how Janelle dreamt outside of the box? She did not let what she couldn't find in the U.S. stop her from accomplishing her dream. Make sure you take that as a mental note and make sure you apply that to your life. You know, one of the stories that I absolutely love sharing is how, you know, I was blessed with a grant from Beyonce's philanthropic brand, Be Good. People always ask, how did that happen? How did that happen? Honestly, when I go back and look at that video that I submitted, I'm like, Ugh, I don't know if I would have chosen me. However, if I'm being very honest and transparent with you guys, I've had Be Good on my vision board since 2000, maybe 18 or 2019. I believe it was 19. I literally uh, learned how to use Photoshop. I mocked up a food truck and I put Be Good. I put her brand on there and I specifically said that Beyonce is going to work with me one day and we're going to take this food truck out in her, under her philanthropic brands and we're going to feed the homeless. We're going to host backpack drives, etc. I even put that it's going to be a $20,000 job. Okay, so fast forward from 2019 to 2020, and one day I receive an email from Be Good, the philanthropic brand, saying that I've been selected from, for a grant from her. Guys, please dream outside the box. Things may not happen the way you want them to happen. So listen to Janelle's story, right? She loved volleyball, she wanted to play on it, et cetera, but she couldn't do it professionally here in the States. But she made her thing happen outside of the States. I knew I was going to work with Beyonce, or I knew I wanted to, and I knew I wanted it to be with the food truck. I've already received $10,000 without doing anything by just being my authentic self and showing, uh, telling my story. Again, the video I submitted was not great, I promise you. Nonetheless, please keep dreaming. And today's message is to dream outside of the box. Do not limit yourself, okay? As always, you can find me right here every Monday through Friday morning at 9 a.m. And I love, love, love inspirational stories. So make sure you're following us on Instagram and Facebook at American Star TV and share your stories with us. We really want to hear about them. I really, really do. Because you guys, you never know who you're inspiring. So let's make sure we're passing the baton. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye-bye.